Good morning, you listen to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. I'm with Scott Sandlin, the newly promoted executive vice president running Shaw's residential business. Scott, how you doing? I'm fantastic, Kemp. We're right here in Chattanooga together, so it's good we could be here together, but still six feet apart. I want to talk about your promotion. Before we get to that, though, let's talk about the business. Do you think we're at the bottom of this coronavirus economic shutdown? I think you have to look by channel. Retail, statistically, has bottomed out and is coming back. Now, how it's going to come back, we don't know. Builders kind of hanging on and with all the backlogs, and home centers really haven't missed a beat. But the good news for, I think, most of your audience is that retail statistically has bottomed out and is starting to come back, which is a very positive thing for all of us. The one, I guess, casually through all this is the installed products like carpet, right? Going in the home has been a, been a casualty so far, but I was just on the phone with a great customer of ours. We were talking about this. I really think it could turn into an advantage because if they can prove to the consumer, you're going to have to have people in your home doing work. So I think our retailers can really turn that into a positive if they do it the safest way for the consumer. I really feel that. Do you feel like there's going to be some pent-up demand as soon as people feel like it's all clear? I've got another theory. Not only who does it the safest will win, but I also think this. We've all been around, you and I both have been around our homes for what, six, eight weeks now? And and I'm, I'm going in the office every other day, but I'm still around here more than I've ever been. And you come up with projects you want to get done. Everybody I work with is working on a home project right now. And I also think this, the home will become more of a centerpiece of who we are. The family has retreated back to the home. So it's not a bad time once we get through this to be in flooring, I don't think at all. All right, let's get to the main reason I'm here. Congratulations. I mean, you've got to be pinching yourself. You're in charge of Shaw's, I guess, biggest business when you start looking at the sheer volume of it. I mean, you're UT grad, so congratulations to UT, right? <laughs> yeah, the big orange needs some positive things. That's good. Yeah, I don't know if I'm pinching myself or it's a pinched nerve at this age, but, but uh, it's an honor. How many folks can go 33 years with a company and get an opportunity like this and work around great folks and work with great folks in the industry like you and our customers and it's a pretty special thing so you started with shaw in 86 is that right that's right and so are you what 57 right now <laughs> brownie point you're supposed to guess low i'm 55 yeah so i'm getting ready to be 56 in may so i actually got out of tennessee a little young but no i've, I've been with shaw yeah i've going on almost 34 years so yeah i got out when i was 21 yeah so julius shaw was your first boss he put you in knoxville gave you a territory you developed some relationships there you, then you went to philadelphia and you helped run main street came up with some interesting rewards and awards and you've always kind of played and made games out of some things then you went into marketing for carpet then you were assigned to hard surface for 10 years and did that to kind of you know help grow that business that was when shaw had acquired anderson getting into these other hard surface products and then you had all of marketing and product development then you had all of sales, and now you have all of residential, right? You know, as we're sitting here talking, there's a plane going overhead. I hope there's some people on it. <laughs> but, yeah, I've had a lot of different roles. You mentioned something. You know, I do like to make sure we have a fun environment around the office, but we do that a lot through competition and doing different things. Yeah, I've, I've had various roles, but I, I guess we're probably where I got my MBA in business was the 10 years in hard surface because I moved into that at a time where it really wasn't core to Shaw and learned how to develop a great team and, and realized that kind of where I went from being like an individual contributor, you hear that term, to a person that really had to lead and, and, and rally a team around something that was really, really tough for us to get our hands around. I'm so proud of that team when we started getting our hands around it. That's where I really, really learned a lot. Well, you guys have been growing too. I mean, the last couple of years, you've made some major inroads. We just finished our annual report. You know, Shaw Industries in the United States is the largest flooring company by about $300 million. So you've taken some share, done some of the right things. And that's why I say about the pinch myself is that you're with the largest company and you've got the, one of the biggest roles. Yeah, no, no, no I'm honored. I, and, 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 and hey, I feel an enormous responsibility because, you know, I'm sitting here at 55 and have had a really a special career. Career, you reach a point, and I know you, you and I have probably reached that point at, at some more times, you, where you start thinking about, okay, what's in it for the other folks? And I really want to make sure this thing is thriving over the next 10 or 15, whatever my run is, and making sure that the next generation has the same opportunities we've had. And that's to be in a great industry with great people in a thriving business where you're growing. You've got to have a growth mindset. we got to make the appropriate return, but we got to grow. 
what are the big challenges you think that you face as you step into this role? I think it might be the toughest time in my career to transition into a role. Even though I know the company real well and I know the customers real well, a lot has changed, Count. So I, I think the whole COVID-19 and how we lead the business and plan the business. Like we spent most of the morning talking about scenarios. More than ever, you just can't have a couple scenarios. You're planning and managing the business coming out of this. I don't think a lot happens from a share perspective or a shift perspective going into this. But I think coming out of it, a lot's going to happen, and we got to be ready for that and got to know what that means. I mean, one of the things we're watching, I mentioned it a few minutes ago, and I've heard people you know, slam it again, but this whole use of carpet, the sale of carpet, is this going to be a, you know, a product that people are going to want less of? Who knows? Yeah, and, and I think we got to be aggressive there and making sure we, we do the science behind that as well. I've heard things where porous surfaces are actually better than non-porous surfaces. I don't know scientifically, but, but I think that's things we got to check out and be on top of and get, get that message to the consumer. We can't forget about the consumer when it comes to carpet. we got to get to her and make sure we're telling the story. Well, let's don't forget your extracurricular. I mean, you're an Iron Man, and I think you do one of those every year or, or maybe more than that. You've got the St. Jude thing. You look back in, in your resume. You were big with Big Brother, Big Sister. You've always wanted to give back to the community. I'm, I need to ask you, with this closing of health facilities, the Iron Man is three legs. How are you getting swimming in? <laughs> well, we're not far from a river. That's where you swim. You swim in open water when it gets warm enough. Of course, I got wetsuits. But, yeah, the swim's kind of hard this time of year. And, and then, then when they open the pools back up, that makes me a little nervous. So we'll get it in. And, and hey, Kemp, I do all that to raise money. I do that to raise money for good causes. It keeps me healthy, of course. Um, it keeps my mind, I think, as sharp as I can keep it. But, really, it's about doing something for others when I do those events. So, Scott, it's no secret, and it's a little bit of a term of endearment, but a lot of people call you Opie. How did that come about? Well, Julius Shaw and Jerry Springfield, my first two bosses at Shaw, I guess it's the looks, number one. (laughs) But uh, number two, they started calling me Opie, and then it was years before I heard my name. I've outgrown it a little bit, but all my old-time friends still use it around the industry. So I, I love it. We have a lot of fun with it. You know, this exercise thing runs in the family, and not only are you doing these Ironmans, but your wife has some goal of doing a marathon in all 50 states, right? Well, she walks them, but she walks them fast, and yeah, she wants to do all 50 states, and we came up with that idea, but after about seven or eight, it's about to break us, so we we, we don't know if we're going to do it or not, but we'll, we're going to try to get there. Well, congratulations. It's uh, quite a promotion for you and well-deserved. Thanks for spending time with us again. been talking to Scott Sandlin the new head of Shaw's Residential Business, and you've been listening to Kemp R. and FortLA.net.